let's introduce ourselves. First, my name is Michael Epstein. I am interested in the expansion of museums and uh, specifically audio and augmented reality experiences that take people outside the museum to explore communities, nature, and current issues through audio and augmented reality walking tours. I run a company in San Francisco called Walking Cinema. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Liu. Uh, my full name is Liu Gaoli, and I'm from China. And now I'm working in Japan in this National Ainu Museum. I'm an anthropologist, and my major is was the South Asian study. And I did field work for two years in Pakistan, and I spent a few months in Bangladesh, in India, and also Thailand. And I was doing a project on the gender minorities and sexual minorities. And I made documentaries, and I made three documentaries on these groups. And <laughs> I'm very new for the museum career, but I really like museum. Well, tell us what it is. Tell us about this virtual tour in just a few words, if you could. OK, I will briefly describe our museum and this virtual tour project. The National Ainu Museum, abbreviated as NAM, N -A -M, is a new museum located in Silawi Town, Hokkaido, Japan. It's all about the Ainu, the indigenous people of the Hokkaido and the region. Uh, it's a very new museum, and NAM is actually a part of a large project called Upopoi, which means people gathered and sing together. It's a significant project because it's the first national facility in Japan that specializes in Ainu culture. And NAM is the first national museum dedicated to indigenous culture in the country. Our permanent exhibition hall covers six topics from the Ainu perspective, our universe, our language, our lives, our history, our exchange, and our, our work. We have a fantastic collection of Ainu handicraft and art, traditional clothes, tools, ceremony, objects. And Upopoi and Nam were so originally scheduled to open in April 2020. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the opening ceremony was postponed until July. Meanwhile, we adopted entrance restrictions, online registrations, pre-ordering of tickets of the next three years. So the visitor numbers have had to be restricted. So in order to promote our Ainu culture and oh, provide more open access to the people, we developed this online virtual museum and allow visitors to access on the museum exhibition. We use that 360 degree camera to capture the exhibits, including details. People can easily view our exhibits, access the digital archive, and even shop in the virtual store. Basically, we aim to offer an immersive and engaging experience for visitors. That was <laughs> perfect. That is so hard to do, to write, so it's timed for the beautiful animation that you have running behind you. Very, yeah. very cool. I mean, I think I understand it now. You basically had to rebuild the museum experience in virtual reality. Yeah, 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 it is. I will share the main difficulties and the positive experience I have during this project. This project was a major challenge for me and my team. Because firstly, we we're working with a so tight timeline. It was originally not in our yearly schedule. But due to the disruption of this COVID, we had to respond quickly. Being a national museum directly led by the Agency for Culture Affairs of Japan, there was an active support and encouragement from the agency, but also the push up very hard to push forward with the project. It was a new venture for us, and there were not many examples to learn from in Japan. So we were really pushed hard to think, to learn, and to work. And another challenge we faced was not having the in-house technical team. I believe this is a common issue for many humanity museums. Typically, we rely on external companies to develop and maintain our audiovisual and computing system. Therefore, when the virtual museum project suddenly emerged, we have to navigate the process, writing the bidding document, and uh, identify the necessary technology we need, and inquiry from the potential partners' companies, it was quite a daunting task. 
and mm -hmm. I dedicate a substantial amount of time of self-educating by reading books of what is virtual reality and home virtual museum. So communicating with the company we eventually chose was also quite challenging as we approach the project from a community and scholarly perspective. But the company primary focus revolved around the profit and commercial aspect. We work hard to bridge this gap, carefully guide them on the cultural ethics and ensure the content represents Ainu culture being respectful and appropriate. And I will never forget the countless emails exchange between me and the company advisor. I actually counted after the first stage was finished and there was over 200 emails. And for sure, the project brought numerous benefits. On a personal level, it is a tremendous learning experience for me. I gained the wealth of knowledge, broadened my horizon, even improved my Japanese skills along the way. And the project allowed our museum team to explore innovative ways to presenting exhibits and engaging with visitors. The virtual museum made the exhibits accessible to a wide audience. And the educational value of the project was also significant. Like my colleagues who are teaching Ainu language and museology in universities, they found it easier to teach students about our museum and access Ainu language material through the virtual museum. But there's a few things you said I, I wanted to ask about before you go too far. I wonder if there were some challenges around that idea of a very traditional uh, indigenous experience of people physically gathering and singing together in the same room and the experience of song and connection and then bringing some of that idea into a space which is you're not physically together you're in a virtual area I'm, I'm curious how you managed that that challenge and thought about it um I think that will be in the future plan because nowadays we what we made is very primarily we just make like uh, an online museum you can access our exhibition hall and we, we not make such kind of augmentation and uh, immersive experience uh, in our <laughs> practice now so yeah it's it's just very simple um, but we have in our outdoor museum uh, in our park we have the real room provide people to sitting together and to see the traditions and experience the ceremonies uh, but not not on our virtual museum now was there any resistance in the museum staff or in the indigenous community to put this virtual experience together i don't think there is a lot of difficulties uh, from the communities and but because time is very short we haven't make a thoroughly plan for that mm. so i'm very fond of doing this kind of project and i hope we'll do it in the future what were some of the things that i know you said you did it kind of because of an emergency and limited number of people who could come in to the museum but it looks like some of the things you've created are going to stay for a long time, right? They're going to remain uh, accessible and, and, and they're things you do in the virtual world that you could never do in the museum. Can you just point those out to me? I, I should say, to be honest, I don't believe our project has uh, particular technical innovations and to beat the other projects. Um, technology development is like worldwide and people, I think, um, just only solely according to uh, technology improvement and people, uh, countries around the world share the similar experience. But what especially in our project is like, uh, when I was appointed as the uh, leader of the virtual museum team, my primary focus was on the human aspect. I want to create a sense of connection and make visitors feel like the Ainu community and the, our staffs were there with them. So by achieving this, I record welcome words and topic instructions, introductions from our Ainu staff, mm -hmm. our executive directors, curators for each section of the exhibits. So we created a series of short videos that are inserted in the virtual museum, in the project, the, in the maps. 
instead of hiring the professional vocal artist, we intentionally choose to give a more authentic and personal touch of the recording. Mm. So the curators had the opportunity to express their passion and insights during the curation process. And Upopoi symbolizes the ethnic harmony in Japan. So we wanted to showcase this perspective in the virtual museum. We aim to convey that all humans are welcomed and equally in our museum. So we also recorded the voices of our foreign staffs. I also proudly recorded my words in Chinese Mandarin. Mm. Of course, and yeah, and I know language takes a prominent place to show our respect for indigenous culture. I think this is uh, what makes us a bit different. Yeah, I see that, the sort of human touch to it. It's not just a scan of a room. It's, it's really giving it a voice. I'm curious, though, about, you know, once this is scanned, do you see things that are happening with this virtual museum that you weren't able to do before, besides the idea that people can view it from home, like lesson plans in the classroom that you couldn't do before, or people noticing details that they couldn't see when they go physically in reality, um, or maybe new types of revenue that you didn't get before. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about those things that have happened with the virtual that um, besides just viewing it, uh, that, that you can't do in the real space. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think like I just mentioned, like it's the educational province is huge. Mm. Like when, yeah, people use the virtual museum when like my colleagues were during the teaching process, they easily to show the museum and they can pick up the Ainu language materials easily from the virtual museum. Got it. And, yeah, also the school so being teacher. able to sort of look closely at those language materials, the it's yeah. easier a little bit in, in, in the virtual yeah. version. And in our virtual museum, you can also easily access our database. We have archive, online archive. It's not easily to find on our web page, but it's very easily to access in the virtual museum. Got it. Oh, that's interesting. So data that can be put more in context and become more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, tell me a little bit, I'm, I'm referring to the question about um, the connection between um, the Ainu people and nature. You know, was there anything about the natural world that came out in the virtual version that was uh, powerful or, or unexpected? Yeah, nature is very important and has immense value to the Ainu culture, as it does in many indigenous cultures across the globe, like the American Indians, I, I believe it's the same. And the virtual museum project aimed to illuminate this museum and Ainu people's profound connection to nature in several ways. Firstly, we, as you step into the virtual exhibit, you will be greeted with the drawn footage capture the nature landscape of Hokkaido and our Uwapoi Park. This footage serves as a reminder that Ainu culture has been developed in such beautiful nature surroundings. And throughout the exhibit, both in virtual and the real, the various aspects of Ainu life and their beliefs about, about nature were highlighted. The exhibit explores the harmony of the relationship between Ainu people and the nature world showcase the sustainable practice such as the hunting, fishing, and gathering from the nature, they were deeply interwined with the respect for understanding the environment. I think it's also important to note that physical visit to the museum is necessary because you can fully connect it to nature if you come okay. in real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, the trees yeah. and the water and the beautiful sight that you have. So maybe the virtual experience encourages people to come yeah, to yeah. because they see in the background this beautiful site. Yeah, I think climate change and sustainable development nowadays become very hot topics. ICOM also aims to call for the museum to be alias in addressing this common threat of climate change. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that uh, we should draw wisdom from the indigenous cultures all around the world. Well, I definitely want to go to the museum just after seeing this visualization behind you with the 
exhibits, the bookstore, <laughs> the beautiful site. I mean, I really want to go. Have you seen uh, attendance steadily increasing? And do you think some of it is due to the uh, virtual museum? Actually, before we made this virtual museum, many people got feared like if they see our this virtual museum and they don't come in real because they, they can just see everything in the virtual museum. Right. But yeah, but actually I think it's things is going opposite. When people will this, they feel it's beautiful and, it, and they, they started to visit our museum and I heard some people say like after they will of the virtual museum and they started to make the plan. I think it's really, I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, this has been fantastic. I have to say you are so prepared uh, and have such beautiful imagery. Is there anything else that you want to say um, in the interview or talk about the project? I, what is one thing is very important I want to say like, uh, I we have to embrace the new technology is important, but however, we must approach this human culture through technology with sensitivity. Mm -hmm. For instance, let's consider a Aino a ritual tool, a wood shaving stick known as Inao. It's a secret wooden shaving stick, but for people who don't know the culture, they just say it's a wood stick, mm -hmm. but it's used for prayers to the spiritual world. Traditionally, it was not common for female to handle the inao. So to respect these cultural norms, female staff members in our museum, we don't handle such items. When this raises this important question, when you're presenting a inao making content in the virtual world, right. how will the experience be perceived by a female visitor? So are there any cultural sensitivities that need to be considered? And I think this is a really serious issue need to be sought and considered. Did you try to deal with that issue in the virtual museum? Uh, we haven't go that deep now, but I think it it have to be considered before we go to the further step, and we have to involve the community and to discuss with them and to learn from them. I wonder if there's a way before people go into the virtual museum to ask what gender they identify as, and then they sort of see the object slightly differently if they're a man, woman, or um yeah different gendered that could be really interesting as a next step so we've talked about a couple of things that could happen next this kind of idea of how in the virtual world we handle objects that have sacred or special meaning we've talked too about that idea of the coming together the singing as a group and the potential for the virtual museum to embody that to a degree are there any other future projects you want to talk about or ways you want to expand the virtual museum? Yeah, uh, our museum as uh, our museum is very young, and our mutual uh, virtual museum is only two years old. Uh, we finished the second version in this year in March, and we are currently planning the third, the third to celebrate this third birthday. And now we're discussing like maybe we will have some special, a, a special exhibition uh, on the virtual museum because we now uh, mainly capture our permanent exhibits in the virtual museum, but not the special exhibits. So I want to encourage some of the curators, researchers in our museum to make a little project on their own research and show it on our virtual museum. I think mm. that would be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, one thing that comes to my mind is that the virtual museum is a place where people all over the world can gather instantaneously. Yeah, so, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so maybe something that leverages that mix of audience that you can get in a moment um, could be interesting. Yeah, there are a lot of possibilities. Well, great, thank you so much. Uh, it's been really good to talk to you. And um, that's it. I appreciate your time and the beautiful imagery that you put together for the background. Yeah, I also want to take this moment to express my sincere gratitude to the Best in Heritage project and for you for the interview. And I also want to extend the warm welcome to all of you, <laughs> in inviting you to visit our museum, both online and in person. Thank you. <laughs>